Okay, let's run. Your mission, should you choose to accept it. It's a quest. It's a quest for fun. Well, The Rock says, why don't we just cut right to the chase? Okay, now he, uh, you know, he wants to get together. Well, you know, he wants to talk. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. It's showtime, folks! What are you? I'm... Greetings and salutations. Welcome to And I Quote, the weekly show where we introduce you to creators of all shapes and sizes that join us in many and all corners of the universe. And we find out more about them by taking your questions. I am your host, Ryan of And I Quote Channel. And our guest on this episode is someone who is making their return appearance. This is their sequel, if you will, to making an appearance on And I Quote. Please welcome indie writer extraordinaire. And apparently there's a new situation going on where there's a tale of two Brian's around somewhere, which we'll talk more about later. Please welcome the one and only Brian Robin. Brian Robin, welcome in, sir. How are you? Hey, man. I'm doing all right. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Thank you so much for being with us, Brian Robin. Now, if you have any questions for Brian Robin as we go throughout the course of this episode, let us know in those comments. Let us know in the chat. A producer is going to be monitoring it as we go throughout the course of this very program. And if this is your first time here, welcome. We thank you for being here. And don't forget to like and share this with all of your closest friends. With that being said, Brian, man, it's been two years since the last time you were here on this virtual set of and i quote channel which even before then it was at one point we were called nerd culture now we've rebranded yeah. we've rebooted ourselves a little bit here we're known as and i quote channel but gosh a lot can happen in two years son so ryan robin two years what have you been doing with yourself how you been uh not great <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a nice uh, to be down yeah. way to start a show yeah a lot of a lot of health issues um i uh for those who don't know i've i've i'm on disability now and had i've gone down that journey uh still on it i uh, still haven't really found a whole, whole lot of answers my asthma is just uh going crazy and i'm along for the ride apparently so that's pretty much where i've been this whole time uh since i've been on your show last is um is you know trying to figure out how to maneuver around what the heck my body is doing now um which i haven't really figured that out yet i'm not any better really but i am able to figure out how to rest and then recover from doing things like this occasionally so yeah we're we're making it work as best as we can so but yeah that's where i've been that's what i've been up to um been writing and illustrating as much as i can um but but yeah hmm that's a nice answer man my health's in the toilet but i'm still standing yeah, I'm still here, <laughs> which, is, which is more phenomenal, by the way. That's no, no, that's good. We're sincerely, we're happy that uh, that you're here. So I hear uh, sources close to me tell me that you've been getting back on the horse in terms of podcasting. How's that going? Oh, uh, it's it's getting there. Um, I uh, my friend, we, well, our friend and and many people um, watching probably know Brian K. Morse. He and I have uh, we've been talking about doing a show together just the two of us for a while and i think last year last summer or something i was just playing around on you know warming up doing art stuff and and i just made like a little promo thing called between two brian's and sent it to him and i was like i want to do this eventually and of course my health was rock bottom you know uh, at that time and he was like well whenever you can figure out something <laughs> with yourself we'll make it happen and you know um, I was able to do comic book spectrum a couple times. And so I let Brian know, I said, Hey man, I think I need this for my mental health more than anything else. So, um, takes a lot out of me to do shows, but I love them. And honestly, like I I'll make that kind of sacrifice, um, to, to do this because this makes me feel like a human again, makes me feel alive. And, and, uh, yeah, so uh, we're doing between two Brian's it's every other Tuesday, on um brian's youtube channel the rising tide channel um and it's at 7 p.m eastern standard time we we have a topic that we talk about but then we also um interact with the chat you know mostly just shenanigans the whole time uh we're probably eventually gonna have uh some guests on every now and then um and uh 
and yeah, it, it, it's a lot of fun. And of course, my my guys over at uh, at Comic Book Spectrum, I, I love being on the show with them, and I've been able to pick that back up semi regularly again uh, on Thursdays. So, so yeah, um, things are things are going all right as far as the uh, the podcast front is concerned. Well, that's good to hear because if there were three Brian's, because my name just happens to be Ryan, not Brian, I would say three Brian's don't make a right. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. By the way, Willow Skyler's here. She says, good evening, everyone. Willow, good to hey, see Will- you too, uh, Superstar of Canada. How you been? I hear Willow Skyler's moving up in the world up there in Canada. She's got some new projects. Oh, yeah. Today, a new position she may be filling up soon. So congrats, Willow. We love you. If you have any questions for the Brian or the flying Ryan over here, which is me, uh, one of the nicknames I go by on social media, apparently one of my acquaintances came to me like, this guy is so energetic. We just might just, just call him Flying Ryan. I'm like, Nice. Well, you, how, many, how many shows did you do today? I've done three shows in the last, let's see. I did a show on Wednesday where I was a guest. That was on uh-huh. All-Star Fandom Prime. Yeah. On, and then I did a show on Friday with the Convention Chronicles with my good friend Jeff. That's on the, that's on the, the YouTube channel that you currently watching or listening to right now. And then I did another show earlier today with Bonnie Gordon of Star Trek Prodigy. Oh, wow which was a lot of fun. And those videos are available to watch if you missed them out on, if you missed out on them during the live portion of it. That's what replays are for, ladies and gentlemen. They're on, Absolutely. they're on our channel. You can always go back and watch them. And they've been a lot of fun. I was actually the second guest ever on All-Star Fandom Prime because Dion of All-Star Fandom just started doing live shows because normally he does pre-recorded segments, which is great. Yeah, I don't mind yeah. that. A lot of people do that with their content, and I have no issue with that. But he says, no, I want to branch out. I want to do some live stuff, and I need a guest every week on a Wednesday. Are you available? I was like, sure, I can do it this week. I just happened to be available at that time, yeah. and we did it. And we talked about the future of Star Wars in terms of television and film, because Star Wars is a deep rabbit hole. <laughs> very <laughs> oh, deep, I know. Ryan. I'm very, very aware deep. of that. <laughs> very deep. And then the second uh, topic that we discussed, and you can find this. This is on our And I Quote Collaborations playlist. Talk about the future of the monster verse between King Kong and Gorgida. Because King Kong and Gorgida have that new movie coming out. The New Empire, I believe it's called. Godzilla yeah. and Kong, New Empire. Yeah, uh, it looks like Thanos and Galactus are teaming up. <laughs> looks cheesy. Uh, looks, I mean, listen, uh, yeah, I saw a trailer. It looks really fun. I haven't seen the previous yep. one. Which is not Godzilla because, versus Kong. Yeah, which, I mean, I'm not against those movies i love kaiju movies i think they rule they're awesome kaiju. it's just i wasn't able to see it in the theater because of, of my health and so um when it left theaters i was like eh, i'll watch it eventually on yeah. streaming it's just not um, the same watching it on in my living room that kind of movie you know i feel like that kind of movie dune the, the big blockbusters that stuff one, like the know. transformers movies do you want to see those in the theater yeah 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 rise of uh, rise of the beasts was the latest oh interview. yeah they did they started to do beast wars right yeah which yeah. We grew up in the, if you grew up in the 90s like myself that was a big deal back then yep me too yeah that theme song the 3d animation oh my gosh yeah. Insane. Yeah, the, looking back it's terrible <laughs> like the the animation wise mm-hmm. but uh but it, oh it's not as bad as what was that what was, what the was that one? show on cartoon network where oh. they like went into the computer or it was 3d it was like computer circuit world kind of stuff i it don't know it wasn't kim possible and it wasn't no, no 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 i mean are you thinking is this a live action show or is it animated no it was it was a uh, 3d where i was getting at is it was terrible cgi at the time yeah yeah at the time just terrible cgi hmm. um and uh, i remember like as a kid watching it going wow this looks awful <laughs> <laughs> this is like mid like late 90s ish so was it called reboot yes that was it thank you willow to the rescue thank you yes. Willow. yeah the, the show i mean i watch the show still but reboot. i just remember going this is bad <laughs> this is bad um wow i haven't seen transformers rise of the beast yet so i can't there's a lot of movies i missed out on the last five years because i just with covid and everything that was going on at oh, the time, yeah, i man. just got away from theaters didn't go back but however a few weeks ago, I went to a local theater with a friend of mine, and we went and saw a movie called or- – is it Ordinary? Ordinary Angels? Or- yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good movie. It was good to be back in a the theater. Good to sit back in those luxury recliners. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you they're push nice. push the button, and your feet go like, oh, my God. 
it was pretty darn cool. Uh, it was a good experience. Would I be willing to go back to a theater now? Now that things have kind of slowed down, things are back. To, things are slowly but surely going back to normal and all that other jazz. I mean, yeah, but I mean, as far as the next movie I want to see in theaters, I mean, really the one that's really got my attention thus far. I mean, this could change, right? Because everything changes with time. The new Planet of the Apes movie looks pretty darn good. Yeah, it does. Kingdom it of the does. Planet of the Apes, and I'm thinking, ooh, ooh, that yeah. looks good. That looks real good. So. Plus, it's from the same people who made who made the the rebooted trilogy with Andy Circus. So, oh yeah, okay. yeah, and it's a continuation of it. I, I mean, was it takes, say the same timeline, right? Yeah, yeah, but the timeline they skip like they skip like a lot of generations. So it's like oh, Caesar's yeah. like great 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 grandson, whatever it is. So it fast forward like a hundred two hundred years into the future. So, mm -hmm. but it looks great. The effects look great. The apes on horses, which is what people go to theaters for, right? Apes on horses, bro. <laughs> Uh, that's still there, right? Apes are on horses, so you know people are going to go nuts for that. And there are new human characters that are going to play a huge factor in this story. So I'm curious about what's going to happen with all that. Because yeah. is the woman in the poster Nova's granddaughter? Could be. Couldn't be. We don't know. Is Mark Wahlberg going to show up? Probably you not. Know, red no. herring? This, no, it does <laughs> not. This does not take place in the forgotten Tim Burton universe. It, it yeah. does not. You know, I haven't seen that one in years. I saw yeah. it when it first came out. Sure. And, I mean, I was a kid when it first came out, and I remember loving it. Mm -hmm. But then when I was, like, early 20s, I mm -hmm. remember a lot of people trashing on it. And I was yeah. like, okay. I never really had any interest to watch it again. But then I was like, oh, well, I guess – guess i won't watch it now i just kind of want to watch it because it's been so long and everyone hates it so much i was like i feel like i just want to see what all the fuss is about because i don't remember much of it at all yeah i, I never got around i saw bits and pieces of it on network television because it was airing a lot during the time yeah. but i haven't seen it in forever i haven't watched it from beginning to end but quite frankly i really have no interest because a lot of people trashed it threw it under oh, a bus yeah yeah. And plus the rebooted trilogy with Andy Serkis as Caesar, by the way. Oh, in the 20, yeah. In the 2010s is one of the best. A lot of people say it's one of the best trilogies ever made. Mm. So yeah, if you want to go back. It was really good. If you want to go back and revisit that before Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes comes out, might be a good thing to do. Yeah. So you, you never know. But what we are doing here is we're attempting to have a civilized uh, indie writer discussion with Brian Rodman, which we're going way off the rails with. But if you like what you see here, make sure you like it. Like and share this video with everyone you know. If you have any questions for Brian Robin, maybe some of his favorite movies, some of his least favorite movies, because we can go all day, folks. Uh, <laughs> let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat. And if this is your first time here, welcome. We appreciate you watching this live or what is known as a replay. With that being said, Brian, I got to ask you a question here, brother, because we talked about your podcast and a few other things. But this has got everybody interested in talking. So Memoirs of an Angel, The Great Pilgrim. What exactly is going on with this project now? Right. So the uh, so for those who are familiar with it, it was a comic book series. Um, has been since it's been going since uh, kind of 2016, but definitely since 2018. That's when like it would all came out in full color and you know rolling uh, pretty strong. Um, and then with my health taking a turn, um, I made a pivot. And we were we were we just finished issue eight. I had written issue nine and ten, uh, and you know the scripts were completely done. And making comic books because I do I do you know I don't want to say I do it all myself because I have a team and I, you know they're awesome and I couldn't do it without them. But I write it, I draw it, I color it, I letter it, I do all that stuff, and that is a lot to do. <laughs> um, and I to and I could still do it but it would take a really, really long time to tell the story that I have to tell. So I had kind of played with prose for a little bit and um, did a short story for Pulp Reality number four uh, over um, Charles F. Milhouse at Stormgate Press and um, kind of got my feet wet with prose, um, bounced it off of a few people that actually knew what they were doing and it got a positive uh, response and I was like, okay, so maybe I can write prose. And so I really, Oh, 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 this is a, uh, this is beastly. Say hi, baby. All right. Come on. <laughs> She's, oh goodness. Oh, they were giving you the full screen. She's going to park right next to me. That's where she goes. She's my editor. Um, but um, no. So I, uh, I just kind of, I made a poll um, 
on social media just saying like you know hey if i if i started doing the memoirs of an angel if i if i did it as a as a novel would you be mad at me and everybody across the board were like i've been waiting for this they're like we want this as a novel because the concept of memoirs of an angel is so big and so broad and it needs to be fleshed out in prose and I tell you, you know, I'm on the tail end of, of writing the book now. Um, you know, we're, we're well, well on our way to launching this summer. Uh, fingers crossed uh, on Kickstarter. And uh, yeah, this is the this is the the format it needs to be in. This is the the medium for for Memoirs of an Angel and um, its universe, which is the Cosmic Wheel universe um multiple books will be coming out of it across the span of history um and all the stories will be connected not really in like a marvel comics kind of way but just like like each book will kind of stand some of them will stand on their own some of them you know you don't have to read to get the meat of the story but they will come out in a chronological order um so like memoirs of an angel the great pilgrim uh takes place in the very very distant future 2000 years after a nuclear war has happened. And so uh, it's not post apocalyptic per se. Um, it's it, civilization has already picked itself back up and, 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 and completely redone the world. The world looks different now because sea levels have risen. The weather did crazy things. So climate is different everywhere. Now uh, what was once desert is now lush forests. All this kind of stuff has happened. Um, and so it is earth, but it looks very, very different. And, um, it's all run by, you know, the, the scary word one world government, but it's, you know, but it is, it, it but I, I really liked fleshing that out in the book because I got to tell some positive things about these things, even though when we get further down the road, you kind of see some shadiness behind all of it. Um, but it's just, it's, it's taking that kind of conspiracy of one world government, kind of flipping it on its head. It's like, oh, well, this has been going for a while now. You know, people seem to be working well together. Um, but there are a lot of behind the scenes things happening. And, uh, speaking of that, it's, it, you know, we cross over from the physical realm to the unseen realm, uh, where angels and demons are. And, uh, the premise of the story is there is this, uh, witch hunter named Jonathan, who is uh he's been looking for six years in this place called the gray it's kind of like a neutral zone um not really like mad max or anything like that but it's just you know there's a space that was heavily uh heavily just destroyed during the the, the final war with all the nukes and everything and it was in the middle east and so they never really restructured that part and they kind of just gave it to the more eccentric people who didn't want to necessarily live in this type of civilized world that that you know that is currently happening everywhere they wanted to kind of do their own thing and have their own little tribes and things like that and so for reasons that i can't say here um they the they, they were allowed to do so and so jonathan is tracking down for the last six years he's been tracking down this this witch, she is the leader of this huge coven that has got their, you know, tentacles in all the things behind the scenes and, and, and really some nasty stuff. And, and she has done something awful to him. And when you first start reading the book, the first part, first four chapters is all about this journey of him finding her. He's been on this journey for six years. He finally found her village where she, where she is, where she's going to be. Um, and he has this plan to assassinate her. He gets up, you know, he's, he's decked out. He's got like this, this relic, this magical relic cross. He's got the holy water. He's got all that stuff and he attacks her and it, it's going well. And then everything gets flipped on its head and she wins. And that's kind of where we go with the story from there. Um, so that's, you know, we, we kind of take that, uh, I kind of take that, that, um, lone individualistic um hero type rugged individual type and show you that you know it fails if you go at it alone that's kind of the point of all that 
uh, the first four chapters. And then from there, we go back in time. And we kind of see, we, we're introduced to uh, the angels of the story. And there is a boy who is possessed somewhere in the world. And they have to find him. And they have to uh, exercise the demon out of him. Or else there will be ripple effects that very well could completely destroy the order of the cosmos. So, yeah, that's that's the basic premise of Memoirs of an Angel. Uh, there's a lot to it, but now that I have it in prose, um, I can really expand a lot of that stuff and explain it and uh, do a lot more than the comic book allowed me to do. Right on, man. Right on. Thank you for uh, sharing that with us. So with this going from one form of a story to another, whether it be comic book, now it's going to prose as a, as a book. I mean, my gosh, after hearing this synopsis, folks. You're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to need a much bigger boat for this one, folks. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Whew. Angels, demons, the... The, the dead rising from the graves, dogs and cats living together. That's <laughs> area. So we're going to some uncharted waters here, brother. But sounds good. Congratulations. Wish you all the best with this. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It's it's coming together really well. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, we've got we've already started formatting the book. Um, the plan is because um, the last Kickstarter that I fulfilled, we we finished it while my health was declining. And then my health was, it bottomed out and I, it took me like almost six extra months, six to eight extra months to get the comic out. So I, I told my people there and then on Facebook, um, that, you know, I wasn't going to launch another Kickstarter until it was at least 90%. The project was 90% done. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we're, that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting on me to finish the book, to get some, to get enough illustrations done, to get enough formatting done. So that way, you know, we can, we can launch and know that our backers are going to actually get the book in a reasonable, reasonable time frame. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Always, every, always better to be prepared folks before you, mm -hmm. before you do something crazy. So check yeah. yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> as, as someone might say, I don't know, but I, what I do know is that we're here with the incredible, amazing, invincible Brian Robin on this episode of And I Quote. Don't forget to like and share this with everyone you know. If you have any questions for Brian, let us know in those comments. Let us know in the chat. If this is your first time here, welcome, and we thank you for being with us. Whether you're watching this live or what is known as a re, uh, replay is what I was trying to say. Good Lord. So, uh, Brian, what advice would you give to somebody who's an aspiring writer? Uh, write. Do it go out there. I, I think there are a few pivotal things that you need to do. Um, first of all, just, just start writing, start doing that. That is, needs to be a constant, no matter who, who's out there or who's not right. Um, and then research the business, learn how comic books work, learn how, you know, indie novels work, learn how the community and the industry work together. Um, those are pivotal things. And then build an audience. Uh, that's huge. I know too many creators who have an amazing story to tell. They put all this work into it and then they launch a Kickstarter and they forgot to get an audience. Um, or they thought, you know, the 10 people that tell them how good their stuff is, that's gonna, that's gonna cut it. And unfortunately, prices for printing and things like that just way too high. Um, and uh, so I don't know, I, I say, get out there. Social media is huge, right? So start sharing your stuff, start posting your stuff. Um, if you're a writer, jump on, look at look for some short story uh, opportunities, uh, some some indie publishers, small press publishers that are looking for, you know, 20,000 words or less kind of short stories um, and, you know, get your name out there um, while you're working on your big project that whatever that is, I think everybody has a big project that they want to work on. Um, and that's great. Um, but I think these things have to be done first. 
Um, you have to be able to, people have to know, enough people have to know who you are. Not everybody has to know who you are, um, uh, you know, but, but enough people to, to get a book printed, enough people to get some inventory so that you can go to shows, which is also huge, um, comic book shows, book shows, and, and you know, um, sell your stuff there. Uh, honestly, I think also um, ebooks are a great, great way to jump in. You don't know, make a book, put it out there. It doesn't cost you anything to do a PDF, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, put it out there, share it with your friends, see if you've got some, if you have what it takes, you know, share it with people who, who are going to be honest with you, who are going to tell you, Hey, you know, this is great. Or this needs work, you know, and, and, and that can point you in a, a good place. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, that's probably the best advice. And, and, Honestly, also, this was the first piece of advice that I was given in 2012 when I started in uh, comics was don't go into this thinking you're, you're going to make a lot of money or any at all, for that matter. Um, you got to you got to love doing this to, to do it. Uh, if, if you're in it for anything else, if you're in it for attention, if you're in it for money, um, you know, those are those are fine things that can can be used and utilized well. But if you're doing it for anything other than the love of your craft, don't do it because you will get you will get disappointed. You'll feel like a failure, and you're gonna feel that way anyway. So, so if you don't have the love behind it, it's 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 not gonna be fun. So yeah, I think those things are probably the best best things I could say. Mm, wise words from a Jedi. I'll, t- I'll tell you what, I mean, you got the thick beard to prove it. I mean, my gosh. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So on the other side of that, though, there's a format known as Kickstarter. Any advice for people who want to post their projects up on Kickstarter? Uh, yes, I would take a year before you <laughs> before you launch and research, research, research. Um, I think uh, Tyler James is a great resource. He has a podcast. Um uh, I'm trying to remember. Crap. In a moment, oh, por favor. Let me see what <laughs> the. Um... You know, what, what's my line again? By the way, Sharon right, is no, here. Well, she says, she hold says on. hello, everybody. Good to see you too, Sharon. Thanks for being with us. Hi. Okay, Hi. let's see. Tyler, that's not that Tyler James. Not that Come Tyler on, James. Come on, guys. What's going uh, on? Comics Launch. That's what it's called. There it is. I could have just looked at my podcast on my phone. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Comics Launch is a free podcast. It's mm-hmm. got hundreds of episodes um, all about how to uh, utilize Kickstarter, how to make it work for you, how to build an audience. I mean, literally any topic that that and it's mostly towards comics, but it's not. But but it's across the board. It's just how Kickstarter works. Um, it's how to build an audience, how, you know, different tips. I I think if you're gonna, if you're gonna launch a Kickstarter, take a beat, don't just rush into it. I would say at least six months, but we took a year, uh, Robin and I, we, we, we said, okay, we want to do a Kickstarter. I've seen other people be successful. And we took a year. We found Tyler James's podcast. We found a couple other resources. We asked friends who had had successful Kickstarter campaigns. Um, and now here we are, seven Kickstarter campaigns later, all of them successful. And it's because we took the time to listen to, to people who have gone before, uh, listen you know, to, uh, to people who, who knew what they were talking about and knew what they were doing. And we did what they said. And you know, on top of that, going to shows, continuing to do the work. Uh, of writing the book and of drawing and of doing all that stuff. It's all this encompassing thing. Um, but, but yeah, definitely take your time and, and, and know how Kickstarter works before you jump into it. Um, know how to promote it, know how to interact with, you know, your audience uh, about an upcoming Kickstarter, because a lot of people still don't really know how Kickstarter works. Um, you know, we still, I mean, we've, we've done seven and we have some of the same people that backed all of them ask the same questions (laughs) whenever we launch again. And it's just because people don't, people don't do it enough. 
um you know a lot of people just you know that they they don't utilize kickstarter that way and it, you know it is a you know so just just be educated on on what it is and how to help your people back your book and and how to how to just do that you know in the best way possible before before you launch right so in other words the more you know there you go <laughs> where's our jingle uh person on set when you need one yeah, uh, yeah. it's all it's all good man but good good pieces of advice thank you for offering that to the person who may be watching or listening to this right now when it comes to memoirs of an angel the great pilgrim they're, you're pulling a kevin feige here you got a bunch of stories that are going to be interesting yeah. you got plans for this stuff moving on down the line right but if oh, someone yeah. approached you and said hey i like what you're doing here memoirs of an angel the great pilgrim let's turn this baby into a potential tv series or a movie franchise who are you going to cast in these roles brian oh man there's too many roles <laughs> Yeah. Um, actually what's sad is, um, a couple people that I had originally chosen like a few years ago have passed away. Um, so, uh, Lance Riddick was a huge person that I, I, I wanted, I wanted him to be one of the main angels and, um, uh, man, tragic when he passed away. Um, I would say there, there are two. So Jonathan, the witch hunter, honestly, I would say Jason Momoa, but not goofy Jason Momoa. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, Jason, not like but... like I he like like Jonathan is a very serious traumatized guy. Um so think like the beginning of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Oh, when yeah. you first meet Aquaman, mm -hmm. that's Jonathan Young. Ah. That's that's him. That's the character. Wow. And so I kind of have always pictured Jason Momoa as as Jonathan. That's always been in my mind, uh, really from day one. I mean, we're talking like, you know, over, well, when I started writing this particular version of, of the script, and we're talking, you know, over 10 years ago. Hmm. Um, and then I think the main two angels, um, Moriel, who's more of a messenger, he's kind of more of a Gandalf type figure. Uh, Doug Jones is, is who I would love to see play. Um, that role, heavy makeup, all practical effects, that kind of stuff. And then um, Idris Elba will be a Kalian, who is more of the warrior, you know, kind of role. Um, those two, that they're those three, probably the 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 biggest, the 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 the, the most firm, you know, solid, uh, you know, uh, ideas that I have for for that kind of thing. But definitely, as far as like, I mean you know, dream, dream of dreams kind of ideas. I would love to see Guillermo del Toro direct partnering with Jim Henson studios. That is, that's perfection <laughs> for me. <laughs> that's certainly a dream team uh, that would, that, that's worked very well in Hollywood on their own terms, but if yeah. they combine forces. Yeah. Which I don't think they ever have. I actually. don't. I don't think there's been a history of Jim Henson Productions working alongside GDT, which stands for Guillermo del Toro. Yes, because that's a that's a long name to pronounce, guys. It is. That's why people call him GDT. Like, what's what's going on, G? You know, they probably just call him that on set. I don't know. Maybe he likes it. Maybe he doesn't. Who knows? <laughs> I'm not a part of the Hollywood system, Brian. Nor are you. So it's like we, yeah. we don't know what goes on there. in interviews. Everybody just calls him del Toro, which is fair. So that might just be what what they call him to his face. I have that's no idea. Fair. That's fair. If they do that, that's great. If they don't, you know, hey, you know what they yeah. say, right? To each their own. But also, this is a great episode thus far. We haven't taken things completely off the rails yet. A Van Dyke <laughs> quote with Brian Robin extraordinaire, who's back on set for the first time in over two years. Don't forget to like and share this with everyone you know. If you have any questions for Brian, let us know in those comments. Let us know in that chat. And if you're watching and if this is your first time here, welcome. We appreciate you being here, no matter what the case may be. Brian Robin, any movies or TV shows that you have seen recently in the last few years since we last saw you that have caught your eye? Oh, man. I'll just go with recent stuff. Shogun has my attention right now on FX, um, which, I mean, I'm watching it on Hulu, but uh, I've watched... The first, no, I'm kidding. I've watched the first three episodes uh, so far, and uh, they're phenomenal. I, I mean, I, uh, I wrote in my newsletter... Um, <clears throat> this past week um it was a bold statement but but i went ahead and said it i said move over game of thrones 
uh, Shogun is here. And I believe that. I really do. If it keeps up, it has that potential. Um, hopefully with a better ending. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Better yeah. ending than everyone dying at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least, I mean, I'm okay with everyone dying at the end. Just as long as it has a purpose. Yeah. You know, and as long, as long as it's not completely just absolutely rushed. And, and you don't take time to really flesh out anything. That was my biggest problem with the last season of Game of Thrones. Oh, GOT, for those of us keeping up yeah. with the, the endless list. <laughs> at home. By the way, Kim Cox is here. She's in the building. She says, I'm getting ready to Hello. watch the three of Shogun when I'm done cooking that dinner. Great story. Yeah. That's my sister-in-law, actually. Oh, so, hey! Yeah. yeah, so uh, this is uh, my, my champion of a wife's sister. Kim's oh. awesome. She's great. I love you, Kim. And I can't wait to hear what you think of episode three because it's it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Enjoy that dinner, though. Yes. Whatever it may be, whatever they're whatever they're cooking up in that kitchen of theirs, respectively, of course. She was <laughs> Shogun, huh? I'm trying to think of the, the the lead gentleman's name on that show. The main oh, actor, big, big dog. He, he was in John Wick recently. He was also in Mortal Kombat. He played Scorpion. He was in MK. Sure. Yeah, the reboot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which I liked. I liked that. I thought yeah, it was all right. We get a sequel to that because they teased Johnny Cage is coming in at the end there. I'm like, well, yeah. let's see Johnny Cage. Well, let's apparently, um, oh, what's his name? The guy. What guy? He played Judge Dredd. Oh, you mean Carl Urban? Yes, he is Johnny Cage. Has he been confirmed to be cast as Johnny? I'm pretty Cage? sure he's been confirmed. Oh my gosh! If yeah, I think they finished filming already. Like I think, like I don't, I don't really know what Warner Brothers is doing. I don't um, think they even know what they're doing. They've made multiple films that like are two years old already and haven't seen the light of day. Well, they finally announced Salem's Lot is coming to streaming, oh. not the theaters. Hmm. Um, and which I'm fine with because I can't go to the theaters half the time, oh. so that's okay. Mm -hmm. And also, like. Hot take. Mm -hmm. I know we all love seeing horror movies in the theaters. Mm -hmm. Horror movies don't do well for the most part in the box office. Mm -hmm. They do a lot better in streaming. So I don't know. I think, I think it has more potential to do well. Um, I mean, I think a prime example was uh, the vo the last voyage of the Demeter mm -hmm. that came out last August. Great movie. Super awesome. Came out in August. Nobody saw it. Yeah, they should have waited till October to release that. Yeah. Because that's yeah. a Halloween movie. That's a scary movie. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, though. Like, horror... I mean, a lot of horror movies are released every year. And you can't release them all in October. No, you can't. You know? Crowded marketplace. So, right. So, they, they, they stretch it out. But the problem is, a lot of people don't go to the theaters to see no. horror movies. I don't that know doesn't why. really work. Yeah. Sure. I don't know why. That's why scary so, movies are better to see in October. I like scary movies all yeah. day, every day. <laughs> Which creeps me that's out. That's just me. <laughs> creeps me out now that you're saying that in front of a yeah. worldwide television Scream audience. Scream is my comfort movie. Uh, did, so. you hear, did you hear what's going on with Scream? Did you hear the situation that's going on? I did. I'm, I'm saddened that of, of the initial right. problems. There was a lot of behind-the-scenes drama yeah. that unfolded. You know. I hate that, but I'm really excited that Nev Campbell's coming back. Um, Hello, and I, I really, really hope, and and I don't know how they're going to do this, but I really hope it's Sydney versus Stu, Ooh. and this will be the last one. Ooh. What a way to go out! What a way to go out! Like honestly, Scream Six wrapped up that arc really well. Mm -hmm. So Scream Five and Scream Six act really well as an arc, just together with those that group of characters. Those I would those have, younger kids, yeah. Yes, yeah. Like I, I think I think it ended. Scream Six ended on a on a on a note that, yeah, that that could be the end of their story, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's fine. Um, and now we circle back to the original, and finish button up her story, and then be done with it. That's what I would want. You know, I think I that would be a perfect way to end the series. Well, seven, um, seven could be a, a lucky number for the Scream franchise to end it with seven installments. So yeah, that'd be that'd be fine with me. And I am a, I am an OG Scream fan. It's Scream is my favorite. Scream is my favorite um, slasher franchise. No kidding. Um, as a whole, absolutely. Because really, all of them but three. And three I'd like, but it's more of a Scooby-Doo movie than anything else. Um, but the rest of them, like, they're all really good. Scream 4 um, is amazing. 
Scream 4 is great. Freaking, I, I dude, oh. the twist and how the killers are revealed at the end. I'm like, absolutely. Well, and I I'll tell you this, think, man. I didn't think it was possible to yeah. top because the twist in Scream 1, when you see it, oh, now, gosh. It, it, you can kind of telegraph it. A little bit. When, but when you look at Scream 4 and you had a new set of kids, right? You had a new set of characters, including mm -hmm. Emma Roberts. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that I did not see coming which, at all. Which, by the way, this was Emma Roberts before she was Emma Roberts. But when she reveals herself at the end of that movie, I'm like, oh, this girl's going places. Mm -hmm. The part this where she's hurting herself. Yeah. Like beating herself up to make it look like she was the victim. Oh, my gosh. Where was the Oscar nomination? <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. She uh -uh. was so good in that but scene. She was. She was. Hayden Panettiere, who was really up and coming at that point, was killing mm -hmm. it. No pun intended, by the way. Um, and I got to tell you, uh, what was it? Emma Roberts, I thought, my gosh, this is Julia Roberts' niece. Mm -hmm. This is a niece of Hollywood royalty, and she's kicking tail in a Scream movie. Oh, How is that even possible, what she's doing? Yeah. I tell you what, though. The one that messed with me the most mm. of all of them oh, of was all Scream of them. 5. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen 5 or 6, so I can't Oh, say. dude. Okay, so... I haven't said... Five, I, haven't, I can't say anything. Yeah, I'm not going to... You don't know how it ends, right? No, no, no. Okay, good. I, good. I know the clips. You should watch. Released, the clips have been released, okay. but I haven't seen any of yeah. them. Watch it, because Season 5 and Season 6 work perfectly together. Okay. They're so good. So, yeah. But, yes, the end of Season 5 actually gave me nightmares. That bad, huh? That, uh, it's not bad. It well, was not great. That, like that, like that there, yeah, man. it was very intense and that scary. Gruesome. Like, that like, hurt. like there's a character in it where you're just like, gosh, when when her when 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 their reveal happens, mm -hmm. my goodness, like it's it's scary. It yeah. really is. I'm so kind of watch these now. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Diana Robbins here. She says your mom is watching you. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she'll love hearing me talk about Scream. Um, she's not a fan of the horror genre. So. I'm not a big horror fan myself, but Scream is a meta commentary. Absolutely. On the horror, yeah. uh, what do you call it? The horror genre. And that's it's it's consistent that way throughout. Season mm -hmm. five, you'll really like a couple characters in season five, if 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 that's what you really like about it. Um <laughs> Yeah, she, she says, nope, I don't like horror movies. Yeah, she does not. That's fair. Um, but yeah, if you like the the you know the meta part of it, you're mm -hmm. gonna love Scream Five. Okay. Especially. I gotta I gotta sit down and and watch the last two installments. So because apparently when the news was revealed that Nev Campbell's coming back, oh that's good. That means they didn't kill her off in the last two movies that I've yet to see. Great. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> Great. Sydney didn't die in the last two movies that I've missed out on in theater. So well, she wasn't God. in six. Spoiler yeah, alert. it was a yeah, pay, so. but it was a paid dispute between her and Spyglass Entertainment. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but, but I think they handled it well in the story. They 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 mm -hmm. handle it well as to like why she's not there because mm -hmm. it takes place in New York. Yeah, it is the sixth one, so, they, completely yeah. different city. It, lots of well, the the last twenty minutes of Jason Takes Manhattan. Lots of vibes about you know, like that because <laughs> I mean the most of the majority of Jason Takes Manhattan is on a boat. It's not in New York at all. <laughs> it's only the last 20 minutes since he's actually in it. And it's just like so like terribly false advertising. I'm sorry to tell you this, but the only Jason movie, Jason's the one with the machete, right? So we're talking about Friday the 13th. Yes. yes. Okay. So the only Friday, and this is going to upset the viewers. The only Friday the 13th movie I've seen is the re remake in 2009 with Jared Padalecki. Honestly, I'll tell seen. you, that's probably the best one as far as quality. Mm. Um, it I was mean, a little much for me. Daniel Panabaker's in it. Yes. And that twist did not see coming uh in that movie. But yeah. no, I mean, I think I think the reboot really pays homage to the whole series, mm -hmm. especially the first three movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And really the first one is great because it's a classic. And if you know like Tom Savini, who did all the practical makeup and everything. Like, if you know how those effects were made, like, that's why I love those movies. It's not because of the acting. It's not because of the lack of story or or the gore. It's just, I love watching the practical effects of those old 80s slasher movies. Um, but but J the Jason movies aren't good. <laughs> so you're not missing much. Like, I would, yeah. I, would, I would watch the first two if I were you. 
Okay. Because out of all the original ones, that's pro- those are probably the best. And then Jason versus Freddy is just. I've seen Freddy versus fun. Jason. I've yeah, seen- I was gonna say that was fun. That was fun to see two of yeah. the biggest horror icons in cinematic history. Yeah. Go uno mano y mano, toe to toe. Yeah. Blade for blade finger. I <laughs> I thought, oh, this is interesting. It's the same actors too. How do you like that? Keep yeah. it in the family, there, Freddy boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Now I'll yeah. tell you my favorite um, Nightmare on Elm Street movie is uh, New Nightmare. Really? So talk, talk about meta. Yeah, meta that's one. my favorite. The meta I, one. Oh my I, gosh! I didn't know that. I didn't know anything about it. Um, with, Heather, with Heather Langenkamp. No kidding. Yeah, I didn't know anything about it. Hmm. I watched it because my my buddy Nate, mm-hmm. who did uh, who has done a lot of commercial art for the Halloween series um he was like look man he's like new nightmare gets a bad rap just just watch it and i did and i'm so glad i did because it's fantastic i just i i love it because it has that meta breaking the fourth wall kind of feel um and of course it has a demon as the villain which i'm a sucker for that kind of stuff anyway so um so yeah i i thought it was uh i thought it was the best and then of course the first three nightmare and elm street movies are just great they're fun they're yeah. 80s cheese all the 80s. way yeah. <laughs> they're 80s in the best way and to be yeah. perfectly honest i will say uh, i've seen all the nightmare on elm street movies i've seen them all i haven't mm-hmm. seen friday the 13th i missed out on i've seen the original halloween i saw the first of the rebooted trilogy that they did with david gordon green yeah. liked it but then obviously they left it open for multiple sequels i'm like why can't this guy just die well, he does <laughs> eventually <laughs> but, you does know. He know? I, I don't know uh, I didn't, I just if, really care. if he if they pick up the timeline which i don't think they ever will because no. of how, how much just how much fandom hates this trilogy jamie Lee um, Curtis is done man and she's and she should be they gave her a great send off yeah she has opinion. nothing to prove no she did none, great none of those actors have anything to yeah. prove no, not at all. I, none of them. Not even the guy but, in the suit. He has nothing to prove either. Oh, um, well, let's see. The, uh, the guy it? in the suit. Oh, what is? Don't go on it. I Nick can't remember. His name That's his name. That's it. Yeah. Nick Castle. <laughs> well, he was in it part part of the time because mm-hmm. he's, he's old, so he, he didn't is. really. Yeah, he didn't really. Uh, he may have he done the do a whole lot of it. TV? Yeah, he did a few like standing stuff, but a lot yeah. of the stunts. I Steady forgot shots. his name, but he was. I follow him on Facebook. He's awesome. Oh, is he? Um, yeah, the, the the stunt guy that that did mm-hmm. most of Michael Myers in the new trilogy. Props to the stunt people on these sets. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There needs to be like multiple awards. For- I would venture to say so. Fun fact yeah. for those of you maybe watching and listening to this right now: A Nightmare on Elm Street turns forty later this year. Does it really? Wow. The original, the very first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we will be celebrating that on Movie Watch Along, which is the channel that, uh, on this channel, which you may be watching or listening to right now. But particularly, this is, and I quote, with horror extraordinaire, apparently. <laughs> no. Uh, Brian <laughs> Robin, who knows more about the genre that I care to th- think about, much less dream about tonight. Uh, but don't forget to like and share this with everyone you know. If you have any questions for the horror master himself, Brian Robin, who can give John Carpenter a run for his money. Let us know in the comments. Let us No, he can't, but he's going to try. <laughs> uh, let us know in those comments. Let us know in the chat. And if you're watching this live on a replay, thank you. Appreciate it. We can't do this without you. We pre- Goodness gracious. But yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street turns 40. And we're going to be doing a celebration of that later this year. So Brian Robin, cool. I mean, if you got the stomach for it, we may need to have you on for that night. Oh, my stomach is large and ready. So uh, there if we go. If you want to celebrate a horror masterpiece, which is the original 1984 film of a, horror, a Nightmare on Elm Street. Thank you, Wes Craven. Thank you, Wes Craven. Absolutely. Rest in peace to Wes Craven, by the way. Yeah. 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 Lost him, too. Gosh, man. Losing some good folks out there. He wasn't very old. No. I think he was was in his 60s. He might have been older than that. I don't remember. I'm not 100% sure, but we lost a big icon in the history of horror. So RIP, Wes Craven. Absolutely. For sure, bro. But yeah, uh, what was it called? Freddy Krueger, uh, what was it? Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. That that theme song is iconic. So That one is, it's not my favorite. Um, I, for a little while, I thought it was my favorite, but the first one's my favorite just because it's so UG, baby. iconic. But the third one, other than the first one, is is just great. 
Um, I mean, the one my ultimate favorite is New Nightmare, but like out of the first three, I got to go with the original one. And then, yeah, I, actually, I I have a new appreciation for Part Two. Um, I never really, I never disliked it. It was just kind of like, it man, because it didn't. Well, it didn't have like the first one and the third one had a lot of the original cast in it or, yeah, or a couple of people. From, yeah. Very connected. Yeah. In, 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 from the first and third one, the second one is just kind of a bridge. And so, but, but uh, a documentary came out about it oh. a couple of years ago. Did you see my, it? My buddy, I did. My buddy, Nate, who I previously talked about is in it. And he talks about, um, because the, the aspect of it, apparently that just like, I mean, it, it ruined the career of the main actor because it kind of un well unintentionally potentially it was on purpose that's kind of what part of the documentary it outed him as a as a as a gay person and and because the script is is a i mean it's it is a pretty homosexual friendly take of um of you know freddie and just it's it's a it's got very um, provocative things in it, leaning towards uh, just exploring sexuality and things like that. And unfortunately, it it got such because of the when it came out, obviously that was not accepted well um, outside of the gay community. And the poor the poor guy, his career. I mean, he got death threats. He got and he eventually had to move move out of the country. So a lot of the documentary is about him. And what, like, what that movie kind of did to his life, but it's also about, I think it's called, uh, I think it might be called Scream Queen. I don't remember off the yeah. top of my head. But uh, if you Google just sure. Freddy Krueger two of those, documentary, it'll show one, up. One of those names. Yeah, it's it's so. up under under one of them. And speaking of friends that you know and people you've met at other events here and there, have you started going back to conventions? And if so, what's that been like for you? Well, unfortunately, I have not been able to. I, I planned on going to Lexington Comic and Toy Con this past Saturday. Mm -hmm. My health just wouldn't let me do it. That's probably one of the hardest parts so far um, is missing out on that. Because not only, I mean, from from a personal, obviously, personal perspective, it sucks. I want to be there. It's a lot of fun. I have a lot of friends, dear ones that I enjoy being around that I just can't. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this, you know, that, that I can't be around. And, um, but as, but also from a business perspective, you know, like the creator isn't there. And that, I mean, I have great representation. Robin and our dear friend, Sarah, um, it, it goes to all of our shows. They're, they're professionals. They're great. They're awesome. But it, 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 it's, it's not the same when the creator of the books isn't present. You know, that, that's, that's, it, it can be a little bit of a, a hardship on, on the sales. Um, and I mean, despite that obstacle, Robin and Sarah have done amazing at a lot of these shows. So we have a few in Louisville later in the year. The book, hopefully, Memoirs of an Angel of the Great Pilgrim, will already be out. It'll already be released. And so I'm hoping to be able to make it to those shows because they're extremely local. I won't have to, you know, I mean, I can't drive anymore, but like, you know, it won't be the big deal to get me there kind of thing. So hopefully I can answer this question in a more positive light <laughs> after after the end of the year. We'll see. Gotcha, man. No worries. Now, for those of you who may be listening, I noticed that Brian's wearing a TMNT hat, which stands for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Have you seen the new animated film, Mutant Mayhem? Absolutely. I loved it. I did see that in theaters. Um, oh. The stars kind of aligned. My, I was able to, my buddy took me over and uh, and we watched it together in an almost empty theater in the, the beginning of the day on like a Tuesday. And um, it rocked. I loved it. I think, I mean, really, it's amazing how much of a 90s nostalgia movie it is. Um, from, from the music to the references to the voice actors. I mean, there are so many people in this that were pivotal to nineties culture. Um, and it's really like, I love the fact that like my niece's generation, this is their turtles. 
Like, that's awesome. Like, my nieces are, you know, like, like preteen. Well, one of them is a teenager now. God. But, um, but like, like they're at that prime age where, like, Turtles is still cool. And, and, and like, they're nerds anyway, so they're probably going to love it. My, my oldest niece is getting into Miyazaki films, which... I'm so happy, but, um, but yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was, uh, the animation was so unique and, um, and the, uh, the voice acting was perfect. Those kids knocked it out of the park who, who voiced the turtles. It, it, they did such a good job. Well, all right. All right. And that, once again, another thing I have to sit down and watch one of these days. I think it's on Paramount plus if you have that. If not, I, I it, don't have it. <laughs> do what I do. When you want to see a movie, get get the either free. Yeah, get the month free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or just just get a month. It's like eight bucks. That's it's cheaper cheaper than a movie ticket. That's the, which, and then cancel. You which know? is which is valid, by the way. Yeah. That's, that's a valid argument uh, to make. There's no que- there, <laughs> there's no question about it. Gosh, okay. Are they making a sequel to that animated movie? They're making, they're making sequels and they're making a TV show. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, every generation has, has that for Ninja Turtles. Okay. Um, I mean, really since it came out, every generation has had their own version of the Turtles. I think there's been like had five like, different ones. Yeah. Nickelodeon's had like five, six, seven different iterations of the Turtles. Yeah. yeah it's, Almost it's a dozen, crazy. I think. Good Lord. But I mean, once again, when it comes to movie, I can't comment on this new one. I've yet to see it, but nothing's going to compare to that 1990 masterpiece. Oh yeah, I mean, for our generation, the first one is nothing's going to touch it. Yeah, nothing's ever. It's like this new Crow movie. Um, oh my gosh! Everybody's, you know, I don't know how you Dude. feel about it. I, okay, <laughs> well, listen, I on the trailer it doesn't look that good. I personally, I think the trailer looks great. But that's fine that you don't like, you know what I mean? Like, that's like, that's what I've been talking to a couple of my friends about that don't sure, like sure. it. I'm like, first of all, we, our gener- millennials and Gen X, we cannot give this new crow a fair, um, a fair call anyway. Like, we just can't. We got Brandon, the- Lee, Brandon Lee. Yeah, Brandon Lee is our crow. But I mean, there have been like so many other iterations that's of true. Crow. There's of been the like three sequels then. to the original crow. Yeah. yeah. But like, for us, it's Brandon Lee. For us, it's that it's that soundtrack. It's it's the the vibes. It's the nothing will ever compare. That and if coat. you go into this new one with that as your expectation, you're never going to enjoy it. The way that I look at it, the way I've looked at it since day one, really, since they officially announced that they were moving forward with the remake and that um, Skarsgård was going to be in it, which I'm a huge fan, so I've never seen him be bad in anything. Um, and all I, this is all I can think of is that Pennywise sc- scary energy as the crow. Like, I feel like that's going to be at least partially good. Um, but the way I look at it is this is the crow for a new generation. This is the Gen Z, Gen Alpha crow. And he kind of looks like a lot of the musicians of this new generation. You know, I mean, not all of them, but like a few of them, like he's got the tattoos. He's got, you know, like it, it looks like this is their version of the crow and I'm happy for them. I hope that it's good. I think I'm going to enjoy it. I liked the trailer, but if you don't like it, that's fine because we still have the first one. That's so there's that, you know, and, and the and yeah, and the other thing is the original crow, known as uh, with the one with Brandon Lee, turns thirty this year. Yeah, and you're muted, by the way, Brian. But yeah, the crow, the original crow, turns thirty. There actually, actually, this year, so we're going to be celebrating that one, of course, on Movie Watch Along, which you can find the, on this YouTube channel. Did you and see the big, uh, the big, the um, big 4K pack that they have coming out? No, no um, I haven't seen that. Oh, it's like a collector's edition 4K box set kind of thing. Too bad They're I don't. Have, it. Too bad I don't have yeah. a 4K TV, much less a 4K player. Yeah, I don't either. I won't be buying it. It's just impressive. It looks really nice. I'm it not feeling really, like I don't need it. So, uh, yeah. If anything, look, I'd be I'd be interested in the special features, but that's it. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But you know, you're kind of looking at like the holy grail, right? You're like, it's right there, but I just mm. right. Yeah, I'm not gonna go buy a 4K TV just for that. That's it's too rich for our blood. But what isn't too rich for our blood is this incredible episode of And I Quote with Brian Robin. Don't forget to like and share this with everyone you know if you have any questions for him, as well as 
What are your favorite turtles, favorite movies, favorite shows, favorite video games? Why don't you? Let us know in those comments. Let us know in the chat if you're watching this live on our replay. We thank you so much for being with us. Good heavens almighty. We've talked about so many different fandoms. It's insanity. <sighs> I'm full of fandoms and many other things. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Uh, it's amazing, Brian Ron. But you know what else is amazing? is the fact that this episode of Anti Quote is actually... Uh, powered by our good friends at Poddex. Now, Poddex are unique interview questions and episode starting prompts located in the palm of your very own hand. So whether you are a new podcaster or existing broadcaster, to be a little bit more specific, looking to grow your audience or get more engagement, you're going to want to check out our friends over there at poddex.com. Use that promo code RYAN10. That's R-Y-A-N-1-0. RYAN10 for 10%. Off your first order. So Poddex wants to know this one, Brian. Who's someone you like to trade places with for a day? Oh, man. For a day? Yeah. One day. A, nor a normal lung functioning human. <laughs> um, yeah. Honestly, oh, man, that's a hard question. Uh, fictional or, or, or real? Or does it matter? Doesn't matter. Superman. 100%. 100 Superman. No, he he is the greatest of all time. I just want to fly. That's all. Oh, you like, just would, yeah. yeah, I just, I would want to fly. Like, I don't want to fight anybody. Like, just hopefully it's a good day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hopefully nobody's trying anything during that, that time frame. But, like, I just want to, like, fly up in space, check out the moon, and then come back. And I'd be happy. I'm, I'm a simple guy. That's that's all I'd like. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I mean, he, you know, for me, he's my number one favorite character of all time. He's the GOAT. Yeah, no, he's. I he, mean, he's definitely the most powerful character. I would not want to be Batman. Too I don't, dark. It's too dark and too brooding. Well, no, it's not even so much that. It's just good grief. Look at all the things he has to deal with. I mean, look at that rogues gallery. No thanks. Like <laughs> I would, I would not want to deal with those people. <laughs> like that's that is not what I'm here for. Just let me be Superman. That's fine. Batman is my favorite. I guess commercial superhero mm -hmm. um i love batman that batman's i know an insane amount of information about batman um and i love him but i would never want to be him i would always want to be superman over batman that's completely fair did you know did you know that tim burton's masterpiece known as batman turns 35 this year i did i did know that and i'm sure they're probably doing some 4k special edition thing of that too that i'm not gonna get but um but yeah, I, I mean, I had the steel book of that one, so I'm happy. Same here. Who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. Great. I mean, Brian, let's face it. You are my number one guy. <laughs> so, you know, it's all good, man. Don't I going to worry about things. So Poddex is curious, though, outside of your expertise on the Dark Knight. What is something you don't mind paying more money for? Food. Good, good, good buffalo wings. Mm -hmm. to be specific that's what i would I, because if you get the cheap ones they're gross the better ones you pay a little extra money it's worth it and uh, i'm a wings guy that's that's my favorite well i guess that means you don't drink the well you definitely don't need this beverage that's that goes by the name of red bull gives you weed oh no that's I'm the last thing you need I do not need that. That's for sure. My uh, my medication would not like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't go over well, uh, uh, which is fair, by the way. What's the biggest, and I mean the absolute biggest lie you once believed was actually true? Santa is real. I went to the grave with that. Mm -hmm. Like, that was... Oh, I didn't actually go to the grave, obviously. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> metaphorically, <laughs> like, I was I was sold. Like my parents did the, like my mom especially did a good job convincing me that that was real. Um, and then uh, my, my dad, if you're watching, you know where this is going. <laughs> um, uh, my dad uh, just kind of killed all of the fairy tale characters in one day. Uh, just ruthless. Just, just, just killed them all. Just like, nope, they're not real. This it's it's me and your mom and I was like oh gosh I I don't think I talked much that day <laughs> as a child I think I just went in because I was old I think I was like I think I was like eleven or twelve like I was old I was I it, it, it and I you know I I 
I don't know. I, I didn't really like when I was around my friends that like didn't didn't believe. Obviously, uh, I was I would just be like, "Yeah, he's not real." And then like you know, but in my heart, I knew. <laughs> and then uh, and then my dad finally was like, "It's time. He, he can't be a teenager and believe Santa's real." So um, so yeah, he saved me from some uh, possible ridicule. Um, but I think honestly, that's where my, uh, thirst for critical thinking began <laughs> um, because after that, I was like, I need to know if things are real or not before I say yes to them. So you, you kind of turned into Mulder and Scully there. You got to find out a what little, it, little because bit, they say yeah. that the truth is out there and you went out to find the truth. I did. I'm still looking. <laughs> so still, still looking. You got that theme song playing in the back of your head. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Hmm. It's a good theme song too. One of the better it's ones that's ever been theme song. Yeah. put in a television series. If you're not familiar with the X Files, you can stream it for free on Freebie right now. Yep. yep. I think it's, it's I think it's also on Hulu as well. If you have, that. yeah, which yeah. I do. I do have Hulu, by the way. So yeah, yeah, I can watch X Files. I wouldn't mind watching that. That's yeah, it's, it still holds up. Yeah, Th thirty yeah. years later. Thirty years later, impressively, still holds up. Like yeah. I watch. I I started. So I've seen throughout my life. Yes. I have seen a couple episodes here and there, mm -hmm. probably a couple seasons worth of episodes out of order. Okay. You so, were, yeah, but I started at season one last year oh, for the first time. Dude, the first season it is so still good. holds up. Like it's so, so good. good. So, so good. good. It could have been made today on Netflix. Like it's so good. It's good. Um, and I, have on, I have it on DVD. The DVD. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I have, I have, I, I'm on season three. And oh. it's still still great. Mm -hmm. I, I, and a lot of people, what, from what I've read and seen and mm -hmm. experienced, a lot of people don't like the overarching stories. They like the monster of the week kind of stuff. Yes. I like both. And... I, I, I do. I like both. I think the overarching story, although I do understand a lot of people say it's repetitive. Way too it's, much. It's just like it's the same thing every time. And I'm like, I get that. And that's fair. That's valid. I, I'm a sucker for the overarching story, though, mm. uh, especially with network television shows, because mm. some of those shows, man, those filler episodes are rough. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it's uh, not the X-Files, but like Smallville. Um, hey, that's my favorite I, show. I, you're no, talking about I, it's the only TV show I have every episode of on DVD and Blu-ray. Yes! So I love Smallville. Yes. I love Smallville. It was, it's really cool because like I was man. the same age as Tom Welling. Well, mm. not Tom Welling. Tom Welling was like 45 when he was playing a freshman in high school. But like, <laughs> I was the same age as Clark when the show started. So I was a freshman in high school yeah. when Smallville started. Mm -hmm. And and so that's why it really, and I watched it with my, my family. Like it was, it was, it was my show that I watched religiously. Um, so, but I mean, to be fair, we got to be honest. Some yeah. of those filler episodes are awful. Yeah, I like, did a rewatch and yeah. Talkville, which is the podcast yes. that Tom and Michael are doing right now, where they're revisiting all 218 episodes. Yeah, I thought to myself, okay, there are definitely a few uh, episodes in each season that are just bad. Oh yeah, they yeah, don't work. Yeah, they, they don't it's, work. It's because they had to. They had to. They had to have so many episodes. episodes. Yeah, which very is why I appreciate streaming. Which. Yeah, by the way, they did a discussion of this. This is recent, too. So for those of you wondering, Talkville is available on all your favorite podcasting platforms, by the way. Go and listen Very to this true. podcast, because the episode they just talked about with Kristen Crook's spell, Ooh. oh my gosh, that is one of the worst Smallville episodes. That is one of the worst filler episodes. Was that in season? What season four. was that? This is season okay, four. Season four, she turns into the witch, right? She turns into Margaret Isabel Thoreau, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. In that okay. episode, both her, Chloe, and Lois, who was brand oh, new to yes. this time. I remember this. New. Yeah. She was brand new. She gets possessed. Yeah. They all three of them get possessed. They pull a whole Hocus Pocus yeah. episode. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. It's like <laughs> Hocus Pocus. Kristen Crook alluded to that, and I'm thinking, yeah, this episode's terrible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's dumb. It's I'll tell you, I, this, I don't you know. I called the hotline. It. Did you know I called? I called the Smallville, the Talkville hotline. I said, "Guys, do you think this was a uh, jump the shark moment for you in terms of the show? Because this episode is really bad when you look yeah. at it. They didn't. We, they didn't get to my phone call. They can only play a certain number of phone yeah. calls during the episode. So they unfortunately they didn't. They didn't choose mine. But I said, "Hey, how do you guys feel about this episode overall? Like, do you feel like it was a jump the shark? Do you feel like it was okay? Do you feel like they should have just not done this at all? I mean, what, what were your thoughts?" Yeah. And then Michael said. Yeah, this episode was 
bad, but the actresses like they played it really well. Oh yeah, yeah. The the premise of the episode was a little lame, but um, I mean, at the time, you know, I was a senior in high school. I didn't really know a whole lot about good stories at that point friend. in my life, so I was like, eh, this is fun. It's witch um, thing, right? You yeah. met them not too long ago, right? Well, not to get on a. Th- by the way, this episode of And I Quote is about Brian Ramen, but for Ryan's sake. For me, I, recently, this was last week, I, I finally, I, I waited 18 years for this, by the way. And yeah. I met Tom Welling and Michael Rosenbaum from the hit series Smallville, a show that I take very seriously. It's my number one favorite show of all time. And it helped me get through a dark period within my life. When I first saw it, the first episode I ever saw, Brian, was episode 100, Reckoning. Oh, wow. First okay. episode I ever saw, because I was scrolling through TV one night and I saw a promo for the episode, right? Yeah. The WB Thursday, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, hey, this show is reaching 100 episodes. That's a big deal for any network television series, right? 100 episodes is a big deal. So I turned it on, watched the episode. Spoiler alert, Clark's father dies. Eight weeks before that episode went on national television, I lost my dad. So when Clark loses Jonathan and you're seeing the funeral sequence play out, you're seeing all this stuff play out on screen, by the way, in a span of 42 minutes, but with a network television show, it was an hour. Yeah, I was bawling by the end of the episode. I feel I this character's pain. I know what he's going through. I feel it. I believe it. I like everything that they're doing right now. They're selling this, and I'm believing everything that's going on. So at the end of that episode, I said, "I'm a Clark Kent fan. I'm a Superman fan. I'm a Smallville fan. If this is what the show is from week in and week out, give me more of this because yeah. this is real stuff. Yeah. Clark dealing with loss. That's real. Mm-hmm. Okay. Super speeding every way to save Lana for the fiftieth time. That's one <laughs> thing." But when you yeah. lose something that you care about and there's nothing you can do despite your superpowers, that makes the character re- the character relatable. Yeah. So I met Tom and Michael this past last weekend and we got a photo op together. It's on our Instagram pages. You can find this on our social media. It's there. And I was wearing my blue jeans, a, pa- a royal blue shirt and a red jacket. The exact yeah. one that Tom Welling wore on the show. That's awesome. And I waited 18 years for that moment. Yeah. And when it happened, destiny was fulfilled. My check, you know, the, the checklist of your life is you've been checked off. You're like, hey, met these big fellas. I got all my stuff signed. I got photo ops. I got a conversation with Michael Rosenbaum and Tom. And you're thinking to yourself, life, this is it. Like when I go to conventions, I go to have a good time, right? Yeah. But when you go to a convention, you got someone that's your number one. Tom Welling and the rest of that cast is my number one. If I don't go to another convention for the rest of my career, and I met every. I haven't met everyone from Smallville yet, not yet. Yeah. But once I've met everybody, I could retire to. I could, hypothetically, I could retire next week and be happy with never going to a con again, yeah. because I would have fulfilled my goal of meeting every single cast member that is available to do shows. By the way, because some of them do not. I was going to say, and some of them. There's a few of them. There's a few that don't do shows <laughs> for different reasons. By the way, for yeah. very different reasons. But as long as I can meet everybody who is going to conventions. My career is, that's it. That's all that matters. Yeah. If I don't go to another convention, I'm good. But yes, Brian, I did meet the cast. That was my long-winded, 60,000-word awesome, explanation <laughs> for meeting the cast of Smallville. Now, if you've met someone who's knocked you out, out, out of the uh, knocked you out of the sky, uh, just blew your mind, let us know in those comments. Let us know in the chat. Don't forget to like and share this with everyone. You know, if you want to know more about Brian Robin and all the people he's met over the course of his historic and celebrated career... Let us know in those comments. <laughs> Let us know in the chat. But yeah, Brian, Smallville does have some bad. Every show has bad stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Bad I did want to say, really quick. I um, I actually do have a moment like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't. It, you know, it didn't. I didn't. The the. Mm, it, it's different than mm-hmm. your experience as to why it means so much to you. Sure. But I got to meet Kevin Conroy. Um. um and dog. yeah, I get to meet him, have a I very can't. brief conversation with him. He, we were both exhausted. It was the end of the day on a Saturday. And um, and I got his autograph on an out of print uh, book about the animated series. So I'm never selling that. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. And, um, and that was amazing. But then a couple years later, during the pandemic, I was... I was at home the, the the whole like a year and a half because I was high risk and very isolated, struggling with depression. My wife got me a cameo 
um, of Kevin Conroy, who for five minutes, a little over five minutes, like spoke to my heart about depression and about all of these things. And, and I mean, I still have it. I watch it and cry every time. Uh, of course now, because we, we, we lost Kevin to cancer. Um, but, uh, but man, that video, the autographed book and that experience at Indiana comic-con is I'm, I'm good now. Like, I don't need to, the only other person that I would love to meet is Mike Mignola. Cause he's like the end all be all to me. Um, but, but yeah, that that's, I'm good. <laughs> like Kevin Conroy was my childhood. Um, he, that show is the reason that I draw, um, to be quite honest with you. I mean, that, that's really, that's really where it comes, comes from. My style is very much birthed out of that, that show. Mm. Um, so yeah. Great but, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. And thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Everyone, when you go to a comic con, they have that, everyone has moments, but there also comes that, that moment, mm. that one yeah. moment that just makes it all come together and everything becomes full circle. Right. Yeah. So I had my full circle moment to a degree, but I still need to meet Kristen Crook. Still need to meet John Schneider. Oh, I'd love to meet John Schneider. Yeah, I've, I, and I'm going to tell him like your death scene really <laughs> hit me. It hit me pretty hard because yeah. I like we've all been there, right? But when yeah. your scene happened, and I see your funeral sequence at the end of that episode. I thought this is some of the best. It art. was a, it was amazing that the episode. Way they shot yeah. that, the way it was shot and the way everything was choreographed, like. And this is the thing. There are really? documentaries. You can find these on YouTube, by the way. This is a true story. The funeral, like, they had to use snow machines to put snow on the ground. Everything was practical sets, using fake snow, because they didn't have snow at the time, even though it rains every day in Vancouver. So, yeah. like, they had to put fake snow on the ground. They had to put this and that in the graveyard and all that. And I'm like, well, it doesn't look like you just faked it. Like, it looks like a legit cemetery with all this stuff and jonathan ken is literally being lowered into the ground yeah. it's it's so good but anyway that's just my two cents but yeah kevin conroy we miss you good sir one of the uh, one of the greats so but in the meantime our good friends here are very curious what is one thing people that buy that you think is a total complete waste of money brian oh man <laughs> we could be here all day guys um I don't know. I, I don't really know if there's truly a good answer to this question, but I would say personally, I uh, Apple products. <laughs> I am not an Apple guy. I like uh, I'm an Android dude. Right. Uh, yeah. And so that's uh, that's that's where I land. But I mean, you know, I, at the end of the day, I know people who buy Apple products for legit reasons. And that's why I just think they're overpriced. That's really the only thing to each I, their own. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I just think for me, it's just too much money for that. Like, I don't, I don't need to spend two thousand dollars to get an extra little camera spot. Mm, <sighs> it's just, fair. yeah. I mean that, but but like, you know, I mean, not everybody buys the brand new products. It's fine. Like mm. I said, I'm not trying to get judgy here. That's just my preference. I just don't don't really care for it. He's gonna say, "Tell us how you really feel." No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, William uh, Bove is here. He says, "Hello, Ryan and Brian. Good to see you too." Hey, man. Well, if everything's well in your neck of the woods. If you have any questions for Brian? Let us know. Uh, William Bove. That's a that's a new one. But we thank you for being a part of the show, yeah, William. That's my, my buddy Andy. Oh, it is you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know who this person is, but maybe the other person knows. Cause I don't know anything. Right. I don't, I, I, <laughs> listen, I'm just a simple man trying to make his way in the universe. Ever been as far away as Coruscant once or twice recently, possibly. Anyway, uh, those are lines from a horrible movie that shouldn't exist. Uh, if, <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but you know, the prequels, I mean, let's face it. They're not great. Okay. Which one was that? That was episode two attack of the clones. Okay. A lot. I'm sorry. A lot of them just kind of run together. I know, anymore. right? There's so much Star Wars now. Well, it, it, it's yeah. been going on for over 50 years, Brian. Yeah, episode two history. is not that great. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Which I like nice. the prequels because I don't know. I just I don't know. I can I can make myself like things. <laughs> sure, why not? Just you can, just like you can make yourself like that movie Batman and Robin when you're drunk. I'll tell uh, you this: uh, when you change your perspective of that movie, it gets a lot better. So. Hmm. If you watch it as a sequel to Michael Keaton, to Michael Keaton's Batman, it's horrible. It's terrible. Yeah. It's an insult. 
if you watch it as a successor to the 1966 show, it's really good. Like George Clooney picked up the mantle that Adam West put down. It's true. I mean, he didn't he didn't do better than Mike than Adam West, but he was good in that same way. He was a so good Bruce Wayne. Yeah, and so if you watch it in that way with that perspective, like. Like, just don't even, just, like, completely remove the other three movies, the other three, you know, Burton Schumacher movies, and just watch Batman and Robin as a, like, as a modern-day 1966 Batman movie. Yeah. It it works. That's fair. Arnold is hilarious in that movie. Yeah, you got paid a million dollars per ice pump. Yeah, the whole time, I'm just saying, like, to myself as I'm watching the movie, he's having a blast. (laughs) <laughs> like he's having so much fun that's that's so, very true i mean you know hey she snuck into the back cave we need to we got to get those locks changed she knows who we are <laughs> we'll just have to kill her yep we'll kill her later we have work to do uh by the way uh william bove says i love android too i have no interest in in products sponsored by the other person and then he goes on to say i love batman he's my favorite anti-hero character okay he's awesome that's fair enough there's some good comic book runs out there too Oh yes, oh yes. Plenty of them, actually. More than enough. More, more than, than enough. more than you need. To more be than you need. You. But feel yeah. free to Google it, or you can call Brian Robin at brianrobin.com. But that <laughs> yeah. send him an email. Why don't you? If yeah. you could be a, if you could be a personal assistant to anyone in the world, who would it be? Mike Mignola, aka the creator of Hellboy. Exactly. Yes, I would just love to be a part of whatever team whatever role I can be on on his team at at any given moment. Hmm. All right. All right. You think he's, uh, you think there's a chance now that the reboot failed miserably, they're going to pick up with the third one with GDT directing it. Uh, no, they've are. I mean, the studio has already said no, like no. all the time. And Ron Perlman's in his seventies. Um, so, I mean, not, not, you know, not that that's not possible, but they are doing a, a reboot now, aren't they? They're still uh, doing Did that with a new actor, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not Harbor anymore. They're yeah, rebooting it Harbor, again because right? now I think they're done filming again. All these movies that got done Jeez. filming during the writers' strike, like nobody talked about because everybody yeah. was on strike. I did a long time ago. I heard they were developing a new Hellboy, but then I thought, and eh, this will never work. <laughs> well, apparently, it's done, and the guy that they've got—I've never seen him in anything before, which could be a good thing. Oh. Um, I didn't know who Ron Perlman was before I saw Hellboy. I I, I had seen him in Blade Two, yeah. and that was Which it. Was another had, uh, Guillermo yeah. Toro film. Um, and they actually, fun fact, they they casted, um, they cast Ron Perlman in it so that it would be easier to pitch him as Hellboy, because Del Toro and Mike Mignola were both working on Blade Two, wow. and Del, Del Toro said if we're if we're ever going to get a chance to make hellboy because at this point they had the rights he'd had the rights to make the movie for like six years and he said if we're ever going to make it it's going to be after blade 2 and then finally that's that's of course that was his next project and they got ron perlman because he was in blade 2 holy cow yeah i was not aware of that well, I watched the documentary on Mike Mignola. Are there any documentaries you don't watch? Yeah. Well, you got to think. I'm home all the freaking time, so I got to do something with my I gotta life. Do something. <laughs> yeah. You know, all this great pilgrim stuff needs a break. I need to watch documentaries once in a exactly. while. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or something to that effect. But I do want to take this opportunity to say thank you to Brian Robin for coming back after all this time. To be on this episode of And I Quote, Brian, it's been an honor and a pleasure having you here in studio and talking fandoms, as well as your project, which in this case is Memoirs of an Angel, The Grey Pilgrim, coming soon to a Kickstarter near you, I believe. Yes, yes. So, we're, we're shooting for a summer launch, but, you know, we haven't narrowed down a date just yet. We'll see. So, other, in other words, plans are to be announced. But if someone wants to know more about you and follow you on social media, where can they find you, Brian Robin? Uh, best place is brianrobin.com. Um go there uh <clears throat> you can subscribe to my newsletter i actually uh we just sent out march's newsletter it is a lengthy one all, all every month but it's not it, it's just a long form really really good newsletter i i pride myself in in the newsletter it, it's just a way that i can personally engage with my subscribers and it's free um and you get 
all the updates, all the updates, things you don't get on social media, um, some things you do, but you know, it, it's, if you want to follow me, sign up for the email list, go to brianrobin.com, scroll down on the homepage, sign up at the bottom. Um, and then you can find literally everything else that I do on the homepage of brianrobin.com. So it's a one-stop shop. That is for me. So yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Ryan. This has been a really good, a good time. Yeah, I would venture to say it's been uh, Bossa Nova, Chevy Nova. <laughs> no, mm. excellent. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> gosh, Brian Robin, appreciate you being here, kind sir. My name is Ryan of Anti Quote Channel. The links to where you can follow Brian and myself are located in the description of this video. So make sure you check out those links. Follow us across all forms of social media, but you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at RyanRPM5. Also, we're this close, ladies and gentlemen, this close to hitting 1,000 subscribers. We're so close, we can taste victory. Once we do, we'll go through a great big live stream celebration that's going to include returning guests, such as Brian Robin, talking about how he loves the genre of horror, and Ryan doesn't. And uh, some special guests are going to be joining us. We're going to have special giveaways for you. Our incredible fans slash subscribers are eligible to win, which include 11 by 17 prints featuring characters of your favorite fandoms by the art of John Pinto on Facebook. So make sure you're following him there. If you want to support the show, we got to buy me a coffee slash pizza link. That's also located in the description and in our bio. If you want merch, we got shirts, we got stickers, we got hoodies, we got coffee mugs. We got, I think we also got tumblers, Brian. So if you want you to treat yourself to a new tumbler or a coffee cup, or if you drink coffee, as Brian K. Morris likes to say, feel free to treat yourself. Links are located down below and in our bios on our social media channels, which are also located in the description. Once again, this has been a great episode of Anti Quote. We thank you so much for being a part of this. And once again, thank you to Brian Rahman. Welcome back to the 21st century. Brian, welcome back to civilization. We missed you terribly. The world of internet talk shows is not the same without Brian Robin at brianrobin.com. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, ring that bell to be notified our new videos go up or they go live. And remember, life is better when reading. Take a look. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics. Choose high flying action. Choose death defying escapes. Choose spine tingling thrills. Choose nail biting intrigue. Now's your chance to choose the adventure. The Captain Hawkland Adventures. Available on Amazon.com. You've worked hard and written a great book. Now, it's time to give it a great cover. If you're an indie author or small press publisher, Plasma Fire Graphics is your source for affordable cover illustration and graphic design. Plasma Fire Graphics, when the look of your book matters to you. Good morning! Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>